Kassel. This is the work that I have performed under the guidance of Dr. Timothy Stratman and Derek Barn. This is part of the of his PhD. And what we're going to be looking at is a small snapshot of uh, my project in the involving uh, Mr. Barnum's work. So first of all, I'd like to talk about why it is that we actually want to convert or decarboxylate steric acid. Uh, some of the ways that we can analyze what we are looking for and some conclusions and future research. So all transportation is mainly based on hydrocarbons derived from petroleum, which is uh, distilled. So we have a process in which we can take a fossil fuel and we can convert it into gasoline. Now, the problem is that fossil fuels are a finite resource, so we need to come up with alternatives in order for us to supply transportation demand. Uh, one of the things that is already being used is uh, corn for ethanol, we already use uh, soybean, sunflower, and all those things. Uh, but from an environmental engineering perspective, one of the things that we can do is use the algae that we have removing the organics in a wastewater treatment plant. Uh, now, you have the algae with a large amount of lipids and organics uh, in its tissue. So now what we can do is actually remove those lipids and we think that we also have uh, glycerol. And now we're dealing with this here, which is the same, pretty much the same as the petroleum. But now this is not exactly the same components that you find in petroleum. So we need to actually now understand how it is that we can process this sort of bio, what they call bio crude, in order for us to now process and get the gasoline. So what we do is, okay, we just take any fatty acid, we purchase 99% steric acid, and now we understand the behavior of uh, fatty acid. So the way this is going to occur is by using a catalyst. We're going to go from steric acid to heptadecan. And uh, you can look at the numbers here. This is a balanced equation, but it is not thermodynamically favorable to go this way unless you have a catalyst and unless you put high temperature and high pressure. Now the question is, which catalyst, if you want to use a bimetal or a single metal, uh, the type of temperature and pressure you have to apply, and for how long do you have to have it processed? So, what we are doing, because this algae it has a high moisture content, we're using water as a medium in catalytic hydrothermal uh, liquefaction or processing. Uh, one of the benefits is that, for example, uh, one of the reasons why actually algae is not being used now is because uh, ethanol, uh, corn is already dry, so they don't have to dry it instead of the algae, it has a high moisture content. And so now it has to be dry, and then you're using all this energy to dry the algae. Instead, what you do is use uh, hydrothermal processing, and then you don't have to dry, you're saving money with the, with, instead of uh, burning it. And then uh, you can use the glycerol that you find in the bio crude in order for you to have a source of hydrogen. From the glycerol, you have carbon di um, dioxide, which you can now use with the water to produce uh, another hydrogen supply. So, this is our reactor. What we have is a small uh, 0.5 liter reactor. We have a heater, this thing goes up here, and we have a pressurizing uh, line from here. We can use, if we use glycerol as a hydrogen source, then we use nitrogen. Uh, if we just don't want to use glycerol, then what we can do is put hydrogen as a hydrogen supply. We have the controller here, it goes up to 500 psi as soon as you set it up. Uh, we, we try a few different temperatures to understand what is the relation between temperature and, and our uh, reaction. So, this is a cartoon of what we would imagine is happening inside the reactor. You have water as a medium, you have the metal, and you have hydrogen being attracted to the surface. At the same time, you have steric acid. So, this guy is sort of introducing them and it's, it's being uh, an intermediate, not an intermediate literally, but it's helping out the, the processing of these two things coming together. Now the question is again whether we use platinum alone or if we use platinum and uranium. What we have here is activated carbon which has a large surface area and then the metal attaches to the powder and then this is the, the process of the catalysis. Well, our results have shown that with time, we take samples every hour or every consequently for six hours, and
and we now uh, analyze the aqueous phase, we have now discovered that heptadecane, excuse me, acetic acid becomes heptadecane at a rate of about 90%. And this is actually using a uh, bimetal and at 300 degrees Celsius. So if we run, uh, we did experiments at 340, 300, and 270 with a single metal and two metal. In each case, the bimetal performs better. The smaller the better, only 5 hours, 15 hours, and 33 hours. And this is for 95% of our stearic acid to become heptadecane. So from these studies, we have already concluded that the bimetal is, works better. Now the thing that we have to understand is whether it would be better to work at 300 degrees with both metals or is it more cost effective to actually just use platinum and do it for 8 hours at 340 degrees Celsius. So one of the things that we have to look at is the cost of running it at 340 degrees with just platinum or is it better with the bimetal because the, the metals are expensive and so now we have to understand the relation between energy and the metals. Now, the effect of pressure, what we discuss here now is if we use glycerol, now we're having a higher pressure. So we see that when the reactor is running, you can go up to 2,500 PSI compared to just when you use hydrogen, uh, not from the glycerol, but just hydrogen gas, you're having a lower pressure. So what we're looking for now is to understand how this higher pressure is making the reaction proceed faster. We also now, instead of doing kinetic studies where we take samples every hour, what we want to do is a mass balance. So we're just going to leave the reactor alone, run it for six hours, and see how those results compare to our kinetic studies. I'd like to thank Dr. Strathman, Dr. Barron, the UIUC SRP, family and friends, and my catch for